But this is something you could do in the beginning. It's quite crazy, but we have automatic infused alloy creation. Hello world and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be going all over mechanism and the basics of what you need to start and all the starting machines you're going to need. But let's jump straight into it. As always, if this video helps you out in any way, shape or form, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Ring that bell button for more Minecraft tutorials in the future. Today, this is what we are going to be covering in its entirety. We're going to go through a couple of enrichment recipes, as well as some other alloys recipes, how to make certain power generation, as well as storing it with the machines, cables, how to configure the cables, some other cool little items, as well as a little bit of fluids. It's going to be a big old episode here, but it's all necessary when starting mechanism. First off, let's go over things that are added with Mechanism. You have five new brand new generated ores inside of the world. You have got Osmium, which is a very big part of Mechanism. Osmium is only really used in Mechanism. As well as that, you're going to have Copper, Tin and Lead. Now these things you'll probably find in other mod packs as well. And most likely in your mod pack, you'll be able to use the other mods like Industrial Foregoing or Thermal Expansions ingots in order to use in this craft. As well as that, you can also get Uranium as well, which is something very, very later on in the mod so we won't be covering that today and as well as that you also have some alloyed types of ingots we're going to get one with it being brass which is as most of you probably do know is copper and tin mixed together we also have refined glowstone ingots refined obsidian ingots and finally steel steel is going to be a major part in making machines so you're probably going to want to set up its own array for making steel itself when starting off i'm going to say that you probably are going to need at least these five items right off the bat when you are starting this is basically going to be our end goal for today's episode we have got energy tablets energy tablets are sort of the batteries of mechanism and some of them are actually needed for the configurator now the configurator is used for configuring all the different pipes and cables that you have inside of this mod as well as that you've got a personal storage chest it's very very handy i'll show you all about it later as well as a basic fluid tank and then a basic bin now we before we continue i'm just going to say that when i say we're covering mechanism i mean all branches of mechanism so not just mechanism itself we also have mechanism mechanism tools, mechanism generators, and any other mechanism additions that you can get with inside this mod. Now before you actually go into making any sorts of machines, you can already get, when starting the game, the basic fluid tank, and I highly recommend this getting right off the bat. Now this is going to require 4 iron and 4 redstone in a regular crafting table, and this will give you the basic fluid tank. Now as you can see inside it says you can do 14,000 miller buckets. This means that you can hold 14 buckets of whatever fluid you want, it has to be the same fluid though, inside side of this bucket so if you place it down here what you can do is you can get a bucket and simply bucket all the fluids straight into the inside of here now the good thing about the basic fluid bucket is that if you break it it will remain and keep its contents inside of the tank itself now i'm in survival mode if i try and pick this up it just simply goes into my inventory here and it tells you itself in the tooltip it's got five buckets out of 14 buckets now this isn't the only thing this fluid tank can do if you press n you can see now it's on bucket mode this is why I say you should get this before a bucket, as it only costs one more iron and just a little bit of redstone. Now we're on bucket mode, we can pick up fluids straight away from the world. And if you go over somewhere else, I'm just going to go away from that lava. And if you hold shift and right click, you actually place the buckets back into the world. It's very, very, very powerful. All you have to do is press N again, then you can place it down to wherever you would like. And again, you can just pick it back up whenever you'd like. It's very, very handy. Now, as I said, this also works on lava. So if we put this on bucket mode, we can just start taking away all of this lava that we have in this hole here. And obviously we can get 14 buckets worth. So maybe you were playing with a mod pack that has Tinker's Construct. You can just go over here and go to a lava pool, pick up 14 buckets and then keep going. That's ready for your smeltery. <coughs> now let's kick off the actual machinery parts of mechanism, starting with how to make power. There are many different ways of making power. Early game, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but later game, you've opened up your options. Today, we're going to be covering the heat generator. That is pretty much going to be your first source of energy when starting. The good thing about this mod, though, is that it is interchangeable with other power power sources from other mods so if you have something like a steam engine from thermal dynamics you could use that to power your mechanism machines so you don't necessarily have to use any of these if you didn't want to other ways of actually creating power with mechanism we have the gas burning generator as you can probably guess it's by burning different gases which you find or create inside a mechanism you have the bio generator this is by burning any sort of biofuel so you have to turn vegetables or plant-based things into biofuel and then put it into the bio generator then you've got the solar Solar power you've got some solar panels here or solar generator and that could be eventually upgraded to the advanced 
first solar generator. As well as that, you've also got a bit of wind power. But as I say, today we're going to be focusing on the heat generator as that is going to be your primary source of starting with just mechanism itself. Now to make the heat generator, it's very, very simple. All you need is three iron ingots, one osmium, two copper, a furnace and two wooden planks inside of the crafting table. Now how to set up the heat generator. The heat generator, as you can probably guess, is going to be all about using heat. So you're going to need a lot of heat nearby. This can be done by either using just torches, fire or lava. Personally, I think lava is probably the best. If you're playing with a mod pack that has higher heat temperatures than lava, then by all means use them from a different mod. But we're going to set this up in here. So if we take some lava and we're going to take some iron bars just to stop things from moving around, we're going to place some lava here in the bottom. Then we're going to place a block here and place our heat generator and already you will see down in the corner here we're producing a little bit of power just by that lava that's underneath here you can see its temperature you can also click on this here to change it from different types maybe you're living somewhere that uses fahrenheit so you can just click on this little icon down here for temperature and it will change there's also varying other different ones you can do it in kelvin if you wanted to but I, here in the UK, use Celsius, so that's what I'm going to stick it to. So just with that lava alone, we've got 86.14 degrees Celsius here in the temperature. Now, this is creating 1.95 Fe. Now, Fe is the units used inside of mechanism, but this can be changed as well. So if you're using industrial craft, you can use EU per tick here, as well as joules. The only thing it doesn't have on here is redstone flux, but redstone flux is interchangeable with this mod. But we're going to keep it on Fe since it's all about mechanism. So right off the bat, this is producing 1.95 Fe per tick, which isn't too much. But if we obviously add more lava, that temperature is going to increase. As you can see, it's going very high up, all the way up to 263, 264 maybe? Just about it hits there. And now we're making 20.94. That is a hell of an increase just by adding three more lava bits. Now you can increase this even further if you wanted to by having one more spot just on the top here that's why we're using the iron bars to keep it locked in but as you can see it loops over the top there and now with that one little bit extra we're up to 29 now this is probably the maximum you're gonna really get out of this unless you um obviously maybe if you're doing this in the nether where it's hot in the nether generally anyway or you're using some sort of fluid that is used in say a reactor or something from a different mod to keep this temperature up even higher now you can put one on the front as well and this will increase it even further but obviously you need your output and this block here this little green square that is your energy output on these things so you're gonna pretty much always leave this square open now taking a look inside we have got heat um it doesn't really say too much here you can input some stuff in here so there's like an internal buffer you can put lava in here and the lava will heat this up even further and as you can see it is going very very hot so if you got to a point where eventually where you had some sort of pump you could pump lava into this and it would use up a lot more stuff as you can see it's also got an internal buffer here it goes all the way up to 6400 fe that is no it's not it's 6400 that's 6400 fe there so you can have this to a maximum output of 160 if you had this filled up with lava and had it constantly going and going and going you'll get the maximum amounts but at this point you probably don't have a pump so this is the best way to do things so we have power let's make our first machines now the very very first machine you can make is the metallurgic infuser it's the fact that besides the heat generator it's the only machine you can make and this is going to require four iron ingots two redstone one osmium ingot and two furnaces inside of the crafting table now the metallurgic infuser is very very powerful and it's used to create a lot of different things these are the main things you're probably going to be making with the metallurgic infuser that we have infused alloy reinforced alloy and atomic alloy for now in the basics we're going to be just using infused alloy as well as circuit circuit boards or control circuits as it's called in this starting with the basic then advanced elite and finally the ultimate control circuit now there are many different things that you can do inside this metallurgic infuser and they all require different sources of mixing ingredients let's call them looking inside the metallurgic infuser we have different colors ranging around the area blue is going to be your output red is going to be your input but yellow is sort of this mixing component now in here you can see we've got 10 redstones because i put a tiny bit of redstone in 
inside here. And on the side over this side, on the right, we have our power. It's got a little bit of an internal buffer of 8000 FE. It's pretty, pretty handy. Now, what I mean by these mixers, if I take a little bit of redstone here, let's just take, let's just take a stack. Why not? If we put just one in here for now, you can see this increases by 20. 20 millibuckets is done in. So for every one redstone dust, we get 10 millibuckets in here. So if you put this all in here, it's going to rise straight up. Now, there are many different things that you can make with the redstone, but we're not going to be showing all of them today. But if you want to look at all of them, JEI does tell you all the different things you can use. As you can see, there's only 13 recipes in total that the Metallurtic in future can do. Bearing from things to just changing your blocks to having a bit more decoration, as well as making your necessary alloys required or circuits required inside of this machine. But for this, we are obviously going to be going for infused alloy. So infused alloy is the red mixing inside here, as well as an iron ingot. Now, we don't have any power in here right now, but this is going to make an alloy. So just for demonstration, I've set up here. We have a heat generator in the back here with the exact same setup as shown before. And we just have a metallurgic in infuser in the bottom. Here, we're going to put in a little bit of redstone. We now have 10 millibuckets and we put in our iron ingot. And now this is going to give us our one infused alloy. Any minute now, there we go. We have one infused alloy. And it has used up 10 millibuckets from our buffer so every craft you're going to use 10 millibuckets up now to obviously upgrade this infused alloy you're going to now need a new mixer and that is diamond dust diamond dust is going to be created through actually crushing down regular diamonds but you cannot make the crusher at this point in time so the infused alloy is going to be the only place you can get to but it's going to be the exact same principle you have the diamond dust inside of here we now have 10 millibuckets of diamond dust then you put in your infused alloy which you've now created place that inside and it will create the next one the reinforced alloy then you've got refined obsidian as another mixing type that can be in this side over here on the yellow and then you're going to need your reinforced alloy to get the atomic alloy now there is going to be one other thing that you desperately need to use the metallurgic infusion for now and that is going to be for the creation of steel so that's going to be the two things you're going to be needing in the basic setups you're going to need a lot of infused alloys as well as a lot of steel now in order to use steel we use coal as our mixer so we'll put coal inside on the yellow here and then then we'll have to put an iron ingot inside of the metallurgic infuser to get ourselves enriched iron. But with enriched iron, you have to go through the exact same process again, again using coal as our mixer and having enriched iron to turn it into steel dust. Now afterwards, you can just smelt steel as normal inside a furnace and this will give you your steel ingot that you need. Now steel is going to be used for the creation of every other machine that is inside of mechanism. So you're gonna need a heck of a lot of this in total. So as you can see, you're gonna need a lot of steel and a lot of infused alloys for the very beginning of the game. But as well as that, you're also gonna need these control circuits. Now, all the advanced control circuits are made through just regular crafting, but the first basic control circuit is also done in the metallurgic infuser. So if we take ourselves some redstone and some osmium and go into our metallurgic infuser here, you'll see that we already have 10 in here. But if we put some osmium in, it doesn't work. In order to make these circuits, you're going to need at least 20 millibuckets inside of your metallurgic infuser in order to create yourselves a basic circuit. So we'll leave this to run and we'll get ourselves a green circuit here. Now, in order to upgrade this, it's very, very simple and it's done in stages. To get the advanced green circuit, you're going to need the basic and two infused alloys in the crafting table to get the advanced. Then to get the elite, you're going to need the advanced control circuit on there. I had that placed wrong and two reinforced alloy inside of here to get the elite circuit. Then obviously to get the ultimate circuit, you're going to need an elite circuit and two atomic alloys. So it's very, very simple stuff, but it, over later on in the game, this does get very advanced and you'll probably have a lot of arrays making these automatically anyway at this point you've got your infused alloy you've got your basic circuits and bunches of steel there are now three different machines that you can get at this point i recommend you get all three of these at a basic setup you can choose from either the enrichment chamber the energized smelter and the precision sawmill now the energized smelter is essentially just an electric furnace so it's very very handy early on as well as that the precision sawmill is basically an automatic way of cutting your log into planks but with a little bit of a bonus but the best one and this is the one I think you should get first is the enrichment chamber now this is for a couple of reasons which we'll explain shortly but let's go over how to create it first 
In order to make these machines, you are first going to need a steel casing, which is why you need all these steel ingots. This is going to require four steel ingots in the corners, four glass, and one osmium in the center. You're going to need a lot of these steel casings in order to create all your machines. Now, to make the enrichment chamber itself, you're going to need two of these basic control circuits, one of these steel casings, two iron ingots, and four redstone round on the corners. And it's going to give us our enrichment chamber. If we pop into this little room here on the side, let's explain what the enrichment chamber does starting with early game doubling of ores now straight off the bat the enrichment chamber can double all your ores that you find in the game so besides things like iron you're probably going to want to get silk touch on your pickaxes very early on for both redstone diamond and coal for coal it's not the best because if you had fortune you're probably going to get a few more as when you enrich coal ore, you're only going to get two coal every single time so fortune might be a bit better there similar with diamonds diamonds is also you're only going to get two but if you don't have that early game fortune this is definitely still an option for duplicating your ores it's only really best when doing things like iron or redstone as iron you're obviously you're going to get from one iron ore you're going to get two iron dust which is going to equate to two iron ingots which is perfect for us in the early game now when it comes to things like lapis lazuli or redstone where you get multiple dust per drop anyway every time you put in one of those ores into the original chamber you're actually going to get 12 of those drops in total so let's just throw these all in for demonstration just to prove i'm not lying now luckily things are pretty quick in the early game even just with one basic machine you can hear they're all churning away they are still pretty quick because the first one's already done here you see you've got two iron ingots we've got 12 redstone two diamonds and two coal very very good for early game duplication the other reason you want the enrichment chamber is to going back to your metallurgic infusers if you're going to be making a heck of a lot of these control circuits as well as infused alloys you are wanting to make all of these enriched diamonds enriched carbon and enriched redstone now how does this work simply inside of your enrichment chamber you take one redstone throw it in and this is going to turn it into an enriched redstone as well it goes the same for coal it goes the same for diamonds it goes the same for obsidian because the way to get actually to get enriched obsidian or refined obsidian you first need to get regular obsidian and throw it in the enrichment chamber this is going to give you four obsidian dusts then you're actually going to have to smelt this obsidian dust in the metallurgic infuser and diamond mixtures in order to get yourselves some refined obsidian so it's very 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 powerful this and it's needed in order to get fire in this because then you have to enrich the refined obsidian to get your enriched obsidian it's a very very long process to get these end tier things but obviously this is the basics so for us we're going to focus on the redstone and the coal so inside here we now have the enriched redstone and we have the enriched carbon because it's obviously coal coal is carbon now if we go inside of our metallurgic infusers over here and we take these regulars we already know that inside here it's currently empty we put in one redstone here and it gives us 10 millibuckets however if we put in one enriched redstone we're now up to 90 every enriched carbon redstone or diamond is going to give you 80 millibuckets instead of just 10. so if you don't want to waste resources definitely throw all of them into the enrichment chamber first you'll get eight times the outcome or eight times the output when using these metallurgic infusers which is why i want this machine to be the first one you build both for duplicating of the ores as well as increasing your production of all of your alloys and circuits as well as steel as well once you've got your metallurgic infusers and enrichment chambers all working away it's now time to really get the energized smelter as this is going to just make all your items be automatic automatically smelted all the dust you're going to find and every other thing you can find is going to be perfect inside the energized smelter this is going to require one steel casing again two control circuit boards basic control circuit boards four redstone and two glass inside just a regular um, crafting table now in here you can obviously just take your your dust here and put it straight into the smelter and it is going to churn it out now it is very loud and there are ways to counteract this all the machines are la notorious loud inside of mechanism but here you go we are now got our first iron ingot completely done through electric then next of course is the precision sawmill this is going to require one steel casing two basic control circuit boards two infused alloys and four iron ingots inside a regular crafting table now the precision sawmill it's going to be pretty much the exact same as the energized smelter but instead when you chop down a log in here 
you are going to actually get six wooden planks as well there's a 25 percent chance of getting some sawdust and we'll go over what sawdust can do in a minute so when this chops up we are definitely going to get six and here you go we actually got the 25 percent that time so this is a good way of getting your even more wood out of your locks now you can also chop this down again you can get six sticks per plank actually and again you get that 25 percent chance of getting another sawdust you can also chop other things in here i'm pretty sure you can chop things like stairs and stuff in here but i don't know what they break down into but it's very very good early game for getting the most out of your logs now the really really cool thing about sawdust is just four sawdust in the corner is going to give you a cardboard box now the cardboard box is a very very strange but really cool early game especially if you're moving from your starter base into a little bit of a mega base now obviously this is just created in here in the corner and you get yourselves a cardboard box they come in stacks of 16 but you're only going to get one per craft of course now what the cardboard box does if you look at any block in the game and just right click with the cardboard box it's going to package that block up which is really cool. You can package any single block that you want in the world. Now I'm going to go into survival world because what you have to do is you have to break this block. It's very simple to break. So you could do this with obsidian if you really wanted to. Just break these blocks here and you can see that these are now all storing data. They all have a grass block inside. Then we can place these three down again. And if we shift right click on them, we've now placed these blocks. Now the cool thing about this is that this actually works for things that have an inventory. So everything we've covered so far, I've thrown into this chest if we throw a box on it and then break the blocks really easily you can see that it's now holding chest it tells me everything it has inside but if i just move it over here to the side shift right click on it to pop it off all that inventory is still inside so whenever you're moving base it's a very 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 handy tool now just to show it does work with obsidian let's place down a little bit here package it all up then we need to go into survival mode obviously and i can break these very easily just with my hand and we've now essentially got four obsidians just in my inventory yes you still need to break them in order to pick them up but it's a very, very cool way of moving things very quickly and easily. Before creating your extra machines, though, you're probably going to want a way of actually storing power because doing this all over a couple of heat generators and dedicating a heat generator per machine is probably a little bit tedious. So this is where we're going to now store power. First, you're going to need one of these energy tablets, which I mentioned earlier is basically the battery for mechanism. So you're going to require three gold, two infused alloys and four redstone dust inside of a crafting table. This is give you an energy tablet and as you can see you can store 400,000 fe inside of this energy tablet it's very very powerful now this energy tablet is used in two different things for starting off we're going to go uh, with the basic energy cube which is essentially the battery of this mod pack you're going to require two of these energy tablets a steel casing two iron ingots as well as four redstone dust and this is going to give ourselves an basic energy cube so you can throw this basic energy cube just in front of your heat generator and it will start filling up over time but we'll cover more of that in a moment as well as that we are going to need ourselves a configurator this is where we're going to need another a third energy tablet as well as one piece of lapis two infused alloy and a stick in a crafting table now as you can see this configurator has absolutely zero power in it as well as our basic energy cube and our energy tablets so we're going to figure out a way to power them so over here we have have got ourselves three heat generators all in the same setup but all together and they're all being connected via this basic universal cable we'll cover cables in a second as you can see it isn't joined we actually need the configurator to join this now when you actually pl place things down it's not going to be like this but if we place a brand new one down you can see we've got energy starting to flow right in here each of these are producing 29.47 fe per tick and that is being drawn into here now, in order to charge any of your items, you can take your configurator, put it in the plus, and it's now taking all this energy out of here and putting it into your configurator. That is going to be very, very powerful. As well as that, you can put basic energy cubes in there to fill them up, as well as your batteries. That is also very, very handy. So how do we use the configurator? Obviously, here we're using universal cable for our energy, but there are many other types of pipes. Again, universal cable is using the transferring power. We then would have the mechanical pipes, which you used to transfer fluids we've got the pressurized tubes which are used to transfer gases we've got the logistical transporters which are used to transfer items we have the thermodynamic conductor which is used to transfer heat then we have a couple of more pipes that are used in tandem with the logistical transporter that being the restrictive transporter which so basically sets a line of pipes to be the final destination for things to go like they should try every other option before going this way and if there's no other possible possibility go through the restrictive transport and then we have the diversion transporter which basically is a pipe that uses a lot of redstone logic for you to set up specific systems 
So as you can see here with the universal cable, it's very, very simple. If we just break this here and we just place it back down, it automatically all connects. Obviously the lava spilling out there, but it automatically all connects. If we take our configurator, you can see in the bottom left hand, it says mode. If we shift right click in the air, or sorry, shift scroll in the air, you can actually set this configurator to do very specific types of things. We're doing energy here. You don't have to set it to energy, but we are doing energy. So we can keep it as empty if we just wanted to do everything. Obviously, if we just wanted to rotate things, we could, but uh, the cable is not really one of them. This is more for like rotating machines. See, as you can see, we are switching it all around depending on which way we look. We have the wrench. The wrench is used to pick things up. And then we've got back to items. So we'll put this onto energy right now since that's where we're working at. If we look at any of these energy cables and we right click on it, you can see that's got redstone sensitivity is turned on. What this is telling us is that well, now that it's been turned off, if we give it a redstone signal, it will detach all its end exit points. And if we take away the redstone, it will change that. If we right click on this again, it's turned off and this will no longer interact. So it's a good way of maybe setting up some sort of system in future. It doesn't necessarily have to be with universal cables. You can do this with the uh, logistical transporters as well. If say once a chest was full, you could give a redstone signal to a pipe to say, I stop stop sending things our way as well as that there are different things you could do you can change things to push pull and none none means it does just no connection there push and pull it doesn't really do anything when it comes to cable that's more for when it comes to other types of transport pipes but for cable it's just it's something else you can do so moving on to the logistical transporters now this is probably the tube you're going to be using the most besides energy and here we have got three different lines set up they are all of an di equal distance, except one has a restrictive tube on. So if we go into here and say we just use grass blocks and start placing them here, you'll see that nothing is happening initially. These pipes cannot automatically pull things out of items or inventories. However, using the configurator, they can. If you hold shift and look at this connection that's attached to this chest and right click, you'll see that it's now changed it to push. Push is essentially items can only go one way through this. They can only be pushed through. They cannot go back but we want to do this again and hit pull and now these grass blocks are coming out of here you can do it one more time to completely negate it from going through but and then press it again for it to go normal but for us we want it on pull this is now pulling all these grass blocks directly forward into this inventory as this doesn't have to do any bends and it is the closest point but as you can see it's just diverted and why is that this inventory had now fully filled up which is why all the rest of these blocks are now going into here which is where all of it will lie. However, if this ended up being filled up, then it would eventually go to here. So it's a good way of choosing early game which way you want things to go first. Something to note that with the restrictive transport pipes, as you can see, all of these restrictive transport pipe lanes have something on, but the, this pipe is actually closer. So in theory, it should try these other ones first, but it doesn't. It's still going to choose the shortest route because the system recognizes that each one of them have a restricted transport pipe. So it will just be its default of go its shortest route. However, if I switch these round this way, then it's going to go either way about which way you would like to go. If I place this here, it's probably going to go left, I would say, just at a random guess. And there we go. It's now gone left as it's th basically this restrictive pipe is thinking that this is really, really far away and that it should be the last resort to, it to go to. Now, let's try out this diversion transporter. First, we're going to have to break everything down here. If we place this down and hold the configurator, you see that we have all these different dots. All, the, all six of these sides can be set differently so if we have this here to be only active when there's a redstone signal say you have this side always active and this side active without a sync signal so if we place this down here it obviously connects because we set nothing here over here we set to always active so it should be a straight pass through here it should be off because we only want this activated with a redstone signal and then here we have it on because there is no redstone signal here as of yet but if we go underneath here and now we place a redstone signal, it's just basically going to switch sides, which is very, very handy. So what you could do is have a restrictive pipe here, say that is the last resort, and then have some sort of system here. So you could have some sort of reader that reads how full this inventory is, have it set up with where this is now going to be completely off. So if we put that like that, it's off. Then what we can do is have this inventory pretty much get filled up entirely. It would send a redstone signal basically turning this to turn off and then it would switch around and then this one would start getting filled and only after both are filled it will do this in complete line. It's a very good way of splitting things off in the first bit of early game. But this can also be changed even further so you could obviously have this to be 
active without a signal here and then you can keep going now because of this restrictive pipe here it's still going to choose that as the last location so you can do completely new joins later on another very very cool thing that this configurator do it can actually change the color of different pipes so as you can see this color set to none if we hold shift and look directly at the the join itself not here this is a connection you can see these black lines this is a connection so this would be the push pull normal or none here is the color so you can set it all the way from purple green cyan i'm not going to go through all the colors but as you can see a lot of different colors can be set and this is another way instead of using this diversion transporter you could just use the regular pipes here and use another block to say which color i would like you to go through and this is going to be very very powerful as well in itself now what is this block that's going to utilize all these different colors that there is the lo logistical sorter this is going to require a basic control circuit seven iron ingots one piston all inside a regular crafting table and this gives you the logistical sorter and it's going to do exactly what it said it's going to have a look at the inventory you're going to be able to set it certain filters and it's going to put things in certain places so inside of here be prepared for the mayhem we can set up something like this this is a, a quick job of what you could have at an early game start point so here we've got the exact same heat generators we've covered today. We've got our universal pipes going straight away into our energy, um, energy cube. This energy cube is completely full. And what we have here, we currently have an inventory of nothing. These diamond chests are from a different mod. It's just a very, very large chest. And here we've got the logical sorter. Now inside, I've set it to certain different things. So let's try recreating this logical sorter from scratch. So if we place our logical sorter here and put out a bunch of cables here, and we'll put some along here, and we'll also, how about we change these colors? So as you can see, the colors also do not join, which is very, very, very handy. So you can do what exactly the heck you want with them. Now, as you can see, if we go, actually, let's just go to the very end. All right, that. Our logical sorter is currently set to default none, which means it's going to skip all of these colors and go straight to the none first. If we wanted to say have blue as the default, we set blue here. All items are going to go to blue first unless they're set to have a specific color or no color. Everything's going to go via blue by default. Some other things is you can have here, send a single item instead of a whole stack. Generally, by default, with the logical sorter, you are going to be sending whole stacks of items at once. So if you want to have just a single item, do it this way. As well as that, you have cycle between the connected inventories when sending items. So this is basically like your round robin, as it says, RR. So if you had multiple colors set, set up, you say, all right, do one for blue, then one for green, then one for cyan, then one for red, and so on and so forth. Then you go back to the beginning. Instead of just doing all blue first, then all green, and then all that, or whatever order you have things here. Then you also have eject. This is auto eject. Ejects unfiltered items automatically to connected inventories using the default configuration. Which means if you don't have an item set inside of the item sorter and it's inside of your inventory, it will just send it to its default path. Very, very simple here. This is what we've got here. We've got auto eject on. So, as well as other things, we have got three filters in here. If you go in here and click new, you can see that you've got four different things you can do. If you go to items, what you can do is you can take your block here, place it up in the corner and it says grass block. Now this grass block can do will go wherever clear is, but you can set this to a color. Let's set this to cyan and then save that there. We have some other things here. We've got allow by uh, allow default, so we can allow default items to go through here as well, or we can allow this block to go down the default lane, which is currently set to blue. We can set it to do a minimum amount, it, like it must do a, a minimum, say 10 of these blocks, but at the moment set to zero, and you can say a maximum as well. At maximum, don't send more than 60 of these blocks. As well as that, we've got size mode. I don't really know what side mode does, but I'm, I'm assuming it's how much of a stack you want to send. And then we've got fuzzy mode. Fuzzy mode is really used for tools and stuff. So you could set this to say an iron pickaxe and it will do any durability of iron pickaxe afterwards because they can all have different metadata. But let's uh, save that there, save that to cyan. And now we've got an item filter to cyan. Very, very nice. So let's place that in here and it sent it the wrong way. Quickly had to disconnect that. Let's now place our grass block in here and it should send it straight away. Now it didn't send, and I'll tell you for why, this doesn't actually have a destination. It won't just send things into a line unless it has a specific location to go. So there we go, I said send it to cyan and it's immediately sent it to cyan, which is very handy. We can do that again just for demonstration and straight away it sends to cyan. Now this is going to be, this is not on single mode. So if we placed all 34 in here, it's gonna send all 34 in the one straight away. Next type of filter you can use in this is actually the tags. Now, 
Every single block in Minecraft have their own tag. If you exit out of this and go into the world and press F3 and H together, you will see that says advanced tool tips are now shown. If you hover over all these things, you can see that there's loads of new metadata. Now these things you can see here, we have a load of tags. So Minecraft underscore dark underscore oak underscore planks, that is gonna be the specific tag for this block. But other things are sort of lumped together. As you can see this iron ore here, you have forge under, uh, forge colon ores and then forge colon ores stroke iron that's basically telling us that the iron ore is a forge ore but this isn't the only thing the coal is a forge ore the gold is a forge ore so if we go into here and type in new filter and then tag and then if we typed in forge colon ores and then said yes and then let's just send this to our no cyan and press save you can see all the different ores are cycling through here so now if we got some gold and we got some iron and some coal and place this inside here all of the ores are being sent straight to cyan so this is a good way of sending say lot bundles of things to your enrichment chamber which we're going to show off shortly next we have material so this is a very very similar thing if we took some wood planks here and then place this here it's going to use any material made out of oak planks which is going to be multiple different items in this game. Um, as you can see, it's going to cycle through everything that is made of oak planks or has it involved in its recipe. So this is going to be a lot, lot broader. You're probably going to not use this too often because you're going to need to be rather specific for a lot of things. The last one is mod ID. Mod ID is very similar to the tags, uh, but it's going to be dedicated to a specific mod, I believe. So if I type in mechanism, should be just doing everything that has the ID of mechanism inside of it, which is as it's going around. So if I actually put in some um, some wood in here, where is it going to send it to? I'm going to send it to the nothing because it's made of wood planks. That was a bad that was a bad demonstration. Let's try wool. If we get some wool, place this in here. It's actually not sending it out at all because we haven't specified where it to go. We should set this to also be dark red. But if we put a logic filter in here, it sent that to the red straight away because it's using the mod ID of mechanism because it's in the mechanism mod. Those are our four filters. Some other things you can do is that you can set this to have a security. So this lock over here, you can set it to just be for me. It only works for me. But if you're playing on a multiplayer server and you want other people to use it, then you can use trusted players or you can just open it to public. Now this does have other upgrades. We'll be going over upgrades in a different episode, uh, as well as this, you can use it to do redstone detection if you wanted to. So you could either have it just ignore redstone, you can have it as normal, which is just uh, normal detection. It can detect it, it can't detect it, it depends. Then you have it as inverted. So all these tags in here, you could tell it to do everything, but what's in here so it's essentially a blacklist now then you have it on pulse so every now and then when you give it a redstone system signal it's just going to pulse one then pulse a second then pulse a third and so on and so forth or you just ignore it most of the time you probably just can do it on ignore now let's actually take a look at this setup here so inside this chest we have got all our various different items we have got some things that are going to be set up we're just going to dump it all in and see what it does it's now sending all of our different types forward what it's going to do is going to put our redstone, all the redstone it can do, inside the enrichment chamber and any of the rest of it. It's going to bypass to our end here. Then inside of here, it's going to put our iron ingots into our enrichment chamber to give ourselves some iron dust. It's going to put our logs automatically in our side, our precision sawmill, and it's going to put the rest into our diamond chest, ready to be processed. Now, as you can see, some of the enrichment is already going into our box over here. As well as that, it's sending our iron dust into here as well. Now, what it's going to do is going to loop our redstone back into there and always constantly have this full up at 64. As you can see, the redstone is being sent. It's being sent into here. And then the redstone that's going to be left over is being sent back into our box. Or the enriched redstone is being sent into here. And the enriched redstone is going all the way into our metallurgy confuser in the right place. Then our dust, which is being enriched over here, is being sent to our smelter, with which is going to make our iron ore. The iron ore is then being sent into the metallurgy infuser as well, as you can see by it's popping in there. And then our alloy infusion bits are coming into here. And here we go. Our first little bits, we are getting our wooden here, we're getting our oak bit in here. The coal went straight through because we had nowhere for it to set, so when it, we went to its default, which is purple. And then the rest is just going to keep cycling around. So this is now an, a way of getting automatic alloys, as well as getting automatic iron ingots. Now, um, the only thing about this is that it's not we haven't set a limit on this. 
So this is going to make it all into infused alloys and give us loads of wood. It's not actually giving us any iron itself until this is already filled up. Because as you can see, this is filling up cost faster than it's using. So eventually this is going to fill up in its entirety and the rest is just going to give us iron or whenever we run out of redstone. But this is something you could do in the beginning. It's quite crazy, but we have automatic infused alloy creation. So you might be wondering how you actually set this thing up. It's not just all based on colors and also just doing a little bit of push-pull when it comes to the configurator, as you can see here. You can actually change all of these machines to have their own inputs and outputs. So if we get a brand new enrichment chamber here, all of the machines are the exact same. And click on this side configure over in the corner here, you can see right off the bat that this is the default and auto-eject is off. If we click this button up here, basically that makes auto-eject. So you see this blue icon here that says output. Whenever a craft is done or, or a recipe is done it's going to automatically eject one of these items or all of the items if it's multiple out of the side now this is default we've got blue which is output red which is input green which is energy but then you also have purple which is both input and output and then you have none which means don't do anything which is very very simple now what i've got set up here is i've got all the energy to be input through the bottom here which is what the bottom is here so i've got them all to be green energy there and the back is just going to be gray completely nothing now as you can see all the inputs are actually on the left hand side which is completely default which is very very handy i've got nothing coming out the front so i'll keep that as none and then we have the outputs on the right which is again by default except some of the things here are, but everything besides the metallurgic computer the output is actually going to be on the top which is very very useful so i've got here that as blue and none as gray now you can also get other things on the enrichment chamber you can't actually see it but on the metallurgic infuser if you place this down in here you can see that we have an extra button this is yellow this is why i've got the output being directly from the right here yellow is your extra point so this is where all your redstone coal diamond reinforced um obsidian is all going to go this is why i've got yellow at the top that's basically your extra so this is how you can set all these different things up so obviously in the richmond chamber there's no extra so you don't have the yellow button as well as this you can just say this um, you can make it pure energy usage or you can do items as well it's it's a i don't really ever use this but it's something you could do you know as well as this you also have transporter config so this is uh something a little bit different basically you can set which side is a specific color very similar to your um very similar to how you can set all your pipes you can set each face to have their its own color as well so you can do inputs outputs and stuff like that using the configurator but as well as that as you can also do logic so you can say if i wanted to over here instead of having a pipe that says blue we could say oh yeah i want the left side to actually be blue it's the exact same thing except one's on the pipe one's on the machine as well as that all these machines have the exact same thing when it comes to the item sort you can say ignored normal inverted and but there's no inverse obviously because we're not using filters you can also set this to private public or trusted as well as that you can do upgrades but again upgrades is going to be a completely different part of this mod and that is going to be basically how you set up your starter base. Something similar to this. Obviously, you're going to do it your own way. You're probably going to want multiple metallurgic infusers. You're going to want multiple enrichment chambers and smelters and so on and so forth. But before we get any further into this mod, there is going to be a couple of items which we haven't yet covered, which are very useful for early game. Now, the first one is going to be this bin, the basic bin. This is going to require the basic control circuits, five cobblestone two redstone and then clear spot in the middle and this is going to give us the basic bin now, as you can see there the basic bin can hold 4096 items but it's only of the one item so i've got it set up over here as you can see there is nothing and inside here we have a full double chest of cobblestone now we are going to go into survival mode for this because it only really works in survival if we take our full inventory worth of cobblestone right here and just double right click the entire inventory of cobblestone goes straight into here and then for every left click you get a stack back now you can put only one stack in at a time if you wanted to just by simply just right clicking the one time while holding it but if you wanted to send it all you just double right click very very handy and i believe it's if you had shift and left click you only get one block at a time as well but uh, you can't just shift right click on it otherwise it places blocks like that as you can see 
But that's how that works. You can store as many items as you would possibly like inside of this. Well, up to 4096. Now, this can also be upgraded, but there are different stages of the bins. This is just basically the basic bin. And the last item is going to be the personal chest. This is going to require one glass. We're going to need five steel, one basic control circuit, and two chests inside a regular crafting table. Now, the personal chest is probably one of the best items you can get in the game, especially early game once you've got this steel going. If you press right click right at the back, you'll see that it says you now own this item, very similar to the tank. Now, you can place this down in the world by shift right clicking and you can use it just as a regular chest they can't be joined it's not double chests but they are very big chests by themselves and then uh if you are in survival mode you can break the chest in order to pick it back up and it will keep all of its contents actually inside but the main thing you could probably notice when i right click there is you can use this as your own personal storage so if i just spawn random bits in here you can keep it all inside it's perfect for whatever you need and if you shift right click and place it down as you can see we've got it all inside there and then obviously of course you can just break it right now it doesn't use an axe actually it's going to use a pickaxe and inside is all the same items it's a very very good early game you can have multiple of these inside of your inventory and it's probably one of the best things i could probably recommend for starting off the game as you can see they don't stack and they each have their own inventory so having a couple of these and then placing them down it's almost like an early game shulker box in fact that's exactly what it is it's a very very early game shulker box and i highly recommend and you don't have to place it down to actually access it well guys that is going to be the end of this mechanism basic tutorial if i helped you out in any way shape or form please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the bell button for more mechanism tutorials in the future we've still got a lot more to cover when it comes to basics such as machine upgrades and that is going to be in the next tutorial but until next time guys take care